Hello YouTube, this is Chris in Georgia and today we're going to be painting our uh, Mission First Tactical Minimalist Stock with the Cerakote OD Green uh, from Magpul. For those of you that have watched my lower receiver build you know that uh, I plan on using this stock on my uh, lower due to the fact that it's a very lightweight yet very combat proven uh, stock. It's a very nice stock, very lightweight, and uh, but the problem is is that the uh, the green or the Ranger green does not match the uh, olive drab uh, Magpul olive drab of the hand grip and some of the other components. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this. Now, Cerakote provides two different uh, Magpul OD greens. The first one is called the C series, which is what we have here. Uh, it's used for components uh, like polymer components with rubber butt pads and things. Anything that you need optics, for example, anything that you don't want to put into an oven or expose to high heat. The other one is the H series, which is baked on using high heat and typically used on metal parts, your rails, things of that nature. Uh, this should be more than sufficient for our uh, stock here. Now, before we go ahead and paint it, what you need to do is you need to use some uh, medium grit uh, sandpaper to sort of roughen up the surface of the stock so that the paint will have something to adhere to. Uh, we want to use a brake clean here or something similar to essentially clean the part to remove all the oil and dirt and things of that nature from it to help the paint adhere. And then finally I'll be uh, spraying it on using these uh, preval uh, spray systems. This is a very low cost system that you simply fill up this glass uh, jar with your paint uh, and then you can spray it on much like you would hairspray or anything like that. Um, obviously you need to take care to get your part evenly or to paint your part evenly but uh, other than that you know it should be fairly simple. Now to begin I'm going to start by taping up the rubber piece because I obviously don't want to paint it so we're going to take standard painter's tape and use that to cover this rubber grip. taped and ready to go as far as the paint job is concerned. Let's go ahead and take it outside and paint her up. Now before we go ahead and get painting we need to first sand it down with a little bit of sandpaper just to get it a little rough and we want to clean it with brake free to get all the oil off of it so that we can go ahead and paint it with the uh, and have it stick. So for the cleaning the oil I like to use brake free Spray it on there nice and tight, let it dry off for a little bit, and we'll come back and paint it a little later. There we go. Now that we got it cleaned off, we'll go ahead and let it dry off, and we'll come back and paint it a little bit later. Okay, so it is dried. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my application of my paint. I have my paint inside here. It was well shaken before I added it. This has been primed. I tested it on a little piece of cardboard. I do recommend if you do this that you wear gloves, that you wear some sort of respirator and eye protection, uh, and crappy clothes. So if you uh, end up getting any on you, you won't end up ruining them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this paint and we'll see how it turns out.
we're going to go ahead and let it dry. I think I got it fairly even all over it, and we'll see how it turns out. This will take probably a couple hours. All right. Now that we have uh, finished painting it, I've noticed that uh, a couple of things I did wrong when I painted it. The number one thing is I, uh, I hung it from this, and which caused everything to drip down the back and bubble up here. And you can see that I got a little bit of a bubble there, which is a minor defect I had to deal with. Secondly, because it was upside down, it was hard to get this surface area, so I got a little bit of a miss there. Other than that, Everything looked great. I think in the future, if I were to do it, I'd hang it up here so that everything runs down towards the tape and bubbles on the tape, which I then remove, right? So no harm, no foul. And it gives me easy access to the bulk of the surface here, which is what I really want to get painted right. So either way, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, Comparison it to what it used to be, uh, Ranger Green versus OD Green, this matches this much better. So we're going to go ahead and get this sucker installed on my lower, and my lower will be complete. To do that, you first need to get it started. And these are very tight. So this little pin here needs to get pulled down so that it can get over that first little lip. Once it gets pulled down over that first little lip, it should uh, you know, move back and forth by simply using this grip piece here, right here. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get this started. Pull it down. This might actually be easier if I took it off of this. Hmm, maybe I need to get some sort of pliers. There we go. That's typically where I leave mine anyway, right there, one slot out. And there we go. There's my finished lower with the Mission First Tactical Minimalist Stock, my MOE Plus uh, old, old jab, uh, or Magpul MOE Plus grip. We have our badass. We have our Battle Arms Development uh, Enhanced Takedown and Pivot Pins. We have the two-stage trigger from Rock River. And we have our QDN plate from and uh, Castle Nut from V7s. We also, of course, have our uh, carbine buffer and a flat wire buffer spring. Just want to make a couple of comments about this Mission First Tactical uh, Minimalist stock. Um, it is on there very tight, so there is almost, there is no wiggle at all. Um, that being said, it is kind of difficult to get it to move uh, up and down this plate because it's on there so tight. I like mine at this position right here. There you go.